All right, your eye on health is live tonight. March, if you didn't know, is Kidney Can Cancer Awareness Month. And we've also sorted through some new research showing us that fewer Americans are drinking alcohol. But chronic kidney disease is still a big issue. I want to walk you through the numbers. We've got about 35 and a half million adults living with chronic kidney disease, okay? The CDC tells us that's more than one in seven adults living in our country with that illness. So we're getting our prescription tonight from Dr. Kara Welloway, back with us from Baylor Scott and White. Thank you so much for being with us. Of course. We love having you. So the first thing I want to ask you, simple question. This is this is 101, right? Yes. What do our kidneys do and why are they so important? So I think a lot of people know the kidneys make urine, so mm -hmm. they make you pee. Mm -hmm. um, some other things that they do, though, they help with regulating your blood pressure, your potassium, your calcium, even your red blood cells. That's really important. So three signs if we were sitting at home going, how do I know if something's off with my kidney? Or even if you're a caretaker, Yes. what are the three signs of kidney disease that we need to know about? So I love this question because the number one symptom is nothing. Wow. You feel fine. And most people don't feel anything until the disease has progressed quite significantly. Mm -hmm. Then you might feel tired. You notice that you're not making as much urine or no urine, but most people feel fine. Well, that's good to know. Okay. When we talk about risk, Who's most at risk here? Because there are a lot of diseases that we hear about, and we know that one group in our population is more susceptible to another. Who's most at risk for this? So of all folks who have diabetes or who have kidney disease, those with hypertension, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, or diabetes are most at risk. Those are the most common causes of chronic kidney disease in America. Okay, so anything with a pre-existing condition is something we want to look out for. Absolutely. Is there an age factor involved in this? Are younger folks susceptible to kidney disease as well? They are. Um, there are some genetic uh, changes, some congenital, so some people are born with issues, some people are born with one kidney. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some other factors but the most common high blood pressure and diabetes. Okay while I have you here you know I can't just ask one thing. I've noticed I've looked into some research we're seeing a trend right now data shows us younger Americans younger Americans are actually drinking less alcohol so we got some data from data analyst company NC Solutions and they found 41 percent of Americans are just trying to drink less alcohol but especially Gen Z 61 percent of Gen Z said they plan to drink less this year and if we do the math nearly one in two millennials myself we're doing the same which is an increase of 26 percent from the year before so the first thing I want to ask you is we're talking about kidneys kidney health of all of our organs working together how can alcohol negatively affect our kidneys so alcohol does not allow your kidneys to effectively filter as they're supposed to mm -hmm. filter your blood in addition it can increase your blood pressure Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> My doctor got on me about that last time I was there. Okay, three benefits. If we're, if we're taking a look and saying, okay, I want to drink less alcohol, what am I going to gain from putting down the alcohol? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> Better sleep, mm -hmm. more energy, more focus, less irritability, less reflux. I mean, there's so many things. Uh, the World Health Organization actually came out just last year and said there's no real benefit to drinking any amount of alcohol. Mm. So the healthiest way is really to not drink at all. The CDC had a similar campaign too, saying drink less, it's just better for you overall. You okay, any alternatives? If we're not going to drink alcohol, is there anything else that folks can maybe tap into to relax a little bit more? Yes. So. Even I know I hear a lot of people who are in marketing and you know I'm in places mm -hmm. we're at bars and we're always drinking have something with a few bubbles uh -huh. <laughs> it doesn't have to be alcoholic so sparkling water tonics those can be helpful and there are some really cool alternative I guess mocktails that you yes. can tap into you guys yes. can do your own research on that yeah but while we always have you we like to ask as many questions as possible Love so it. Dr. Carol Willoway <laughs> thank you so much for being with us we are gonna you know Take a take a moment here, taking all that information, and right now I'm going to send it back to Dougie.